Using the software platform is relatively straightforward. There's just a few things that you need to get to know about it before you can start making marks with the laser. First thing you want to notice that most of the editing features are on the left part of the screen and then your laser control functionality is over on the right. And there's a lot of exceptions to this and there's a lot of details to the software but I'm going to start there and we'll build from uh, the basics. So the first thing you probably want to get to know is how to do editing in the software. The software has simple editing capability. It's really not designed to be a graphics uh, generation tool, but it will allow you to do, make uh, simple shapes and create text and generate a lot of uh, things that you need to, to use uh, through the course of using your laser. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create a rectangle. So I grab the rectangle icon over here on the left and drag it out onto the screen and I'll just make a random rectangle. So it's really not any size that I'm, uh, you know, it's, it's just a random size. So one of the first things to show you is, uh, first thing I need to do is go ahead and uh, pick this selection tool again, or the next time I touch a screen, I'll create another rectangle, which I don't want to do. I can grab by using my left, left mouse button, I can go ahead and grab and maneuver this around. I can grab corners of, the, of this image. I can size it this way. Uh, there's other ways I'm going to show you in a moment here. Uh, but the first thing I usually do when I'm making a shape on the screen, I'll go ahead and I'll just center it. So I'll pick this icon right here and this will center anything I've got selected. Uh, the other thing I'll show you right away is I'm going to go to the transform icon, which is right here. I'll click on that and it generates another screen which popped up on my other window. There it is. And this will allow me to do manipulation of this uh, image that I've created or this uh, item that I've created on the screen. If I pick through this, uh, the little windows here, uh, one of the more useful things is to be able to rotate the image, whether it's this rectangle or if it were text or something else. But you can do that right here. It defaults to 45 degrees, but you can easily change that to something else. Uh, you can also change the center point of where it, uh, of where it positions itself. In this case, it's zero, 0, it's right in the middle. The next little screen you can select here is a scaling function. I can go ahead, uh, for instance, if I wanted to just say, oh, I want to make this rectangle 10% bigger. I'll go ahead and hit 10%, hit apply. Because I've got the same scale selected, it, it applies that scaling to both. And every time I hit that apply, notice that the rectangle, rectangle gets bigger. I can go the other way as well. If I wanted to get smaller, I can simply say, uh, change it to, some, in this case, 90. Hit apply, it gets smaller and smaller. If I just want to do one axis and not the other, I'll go ahead and just take off or deselect the scale selector there. And I'll maybe make, I'll keep one at 90, I'll make the other one uh, 100. So one, essentially one axis will change and one won't. So now when I hit apply, notice the x axis is getting smaller and the y, I'm sorry, the y axis is getting smaller and the x axis stayed the same. Next function here that's available is to actually just go ahead and size it directly. Notice everything right now is in millimeters. I can easily change the software to operate in inches, but I'll do that in a moment here. So if I want to make this, let's say, a 20 by 20 square, I simply just go ahead. Well, first I need to deselect the scale. I'll make this 20 by 20. And now when I hit apply, I've got perfect 20 by 20 square. If I wanted it to be something different, maybe... 20 by 30, hit apply, now I've got a rectangle again, now if I scale it, every time I can, uh, now if I change one or the other of these axes, let's say I'll change this to 30, the other axis will change accordingly. Pretty simple. Okay, I'm going to put that away for now. You can do the same thing with circles, or ellipses, and it's an ellipse in this case, but I want to make a circle out of it from an ellipse simply go and create an ellipse, get my transform function, 
I'm going to go over here, I'm going to turn off scaling, I'm going to make this a 10 by 10, a 1 centimeter circle, and there you go, I have a circle. Again, I can easily center it by going and pressing this icon here, it puts it in the center, no problem. The other thing I can do pretty easily from the screen here is create some text. So I go to this icon right here, select it, bring my cursor over the screen, I hit apply, it automatically applies a default uh, saying 3D laser. I simply go over to the left here and I can make this anything I want. Uh, I can say radian test. So I get some text popped up on the screen. It is unfilled. In other words, it's just an outline. Notice I can select the different fonts that I want here, or different fonts that I have available to me. I can easily change that. I can easily change the size. I can directly manipulate it. Right from screens here. Got the other typical functionality for centering or you know, centering or, or biasing the text one way or the other. Uh, there's a whole lot of functionality that I have available to me in this software. I'm going to go ahead and center that up. I was putting everything right on top of each other, but that's okay for now. Notice over on the left, every time I've created an item or something for the screen, an element on the screen, it creates the, it generates a, uh, the list, it, it adds it to the list over here on the left. And if, as I select over here on the left, you can notice that the item is being highlighted, or the image is being highlighted over here in the main screen, the marking screen. By the way, before I get much further, this red square represents the marking area of your laser. One way to simply uh, tell on your laser uh, you know, how big your marking area is in your marking field is to basically draw a box that represents the size of your marking area. And then when we go ahead and turn on the red light indicator functionality on your laser, this will generate a red outline of the size of your marking area. In this case, it's 150 by 150 millimeters. But I'm going to save that for a few minutes, in a few minutes here. I'm going to go ahead and select that and delete that. So I'm not really ready to talk about that yet. <clears throat> okay. So what we've done so far is I've generated a couple shapes, generated a, a rectangle, it was a square, now it's a rectangle again, I've generated, generated a circle, I've generated some text, I've positioned them, I've sized them, and by the way, again, I can size by grabbing a corner, I can size by grabbing a side, if I grab a side instead of a corner, the size of the text or the image doesn't scale, it'll just basically pull in the direction that you're that you're pulling on. So again, if I want to scale it, scale both the X and Y, I grab a corner, or I can go again, I can go up to my transform function and change it directly here. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you is how to fill an image or how to fill text. Again, in this case, the text comes in as unfilled, so it's an outline. I go up to this icon here, it's called Hatch. I click on Hatch bring the screen over into the screen. It's for some reason it's doesn't even fit somewhere it's ending up. So I've got two screens open. There it is. So my hatch screen opens up here. I've got a couple options available to me. First thing I have to decide is when I make my mark, do I want the outline on or not? If I want my outline on, which is showing on the screen, I simply leave this box unchecked. If I don't want to mark my outline, if I simply want to mark the, or, or fill the inside of the outline and not actually draw an outline, I click this box here. And then when I make my mark, this outline doesn't get generated, just the fill that I'm about to show you how to do. For now, I'll leave that selected. It really doesn't matter for this demonstration. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Enable after I've selected my outline. The next thing I'm going to do is hit Enable. 
And then I have to decide what to do about hatching. What hatching is, it's basically filling in the space between lines with, with between the outline with a series of, of lines. And the laser functions by moving across the field to be marked uh, as it's, it's turned on, and then the laser turns off at the end of the, that particular row, moves to the next row, turns back on, makes a mark as it moves across, turns off again, moves to the next row, and so on and so forth. There's different ways of manipulating uh, how the laser turns on and off through this screen here. For this point, I'm going to leave it at uh, the default, uh, the default method, which is shown here. I'm going to go ahead and fill this hatch. I'm going to assume that I'm going to make a mark on metal. We'll, we'll talk about different materials in that later, but for now, I'll just do basic hatching. I'm going to go ahead and fill this with a 0.04 millimeter hatch. It really doesn't matter what it is for the sake of this discussion. We'll talk more about what that means or what the specific hatch size means in later videos. I'm going to hit apply. Now notice that my text just got filled. So now when I make my mark, it's going to actually fill the, the voids that were there before with a, with, it, with a fill, with the hatch. Uh, I've got some other functionality available to me here. The angle that I actually mark. So for instance, when it, uh, the angle is defaults to zero, zero, that basically means it starts, when I'm making my mark, it starts from the bottom and moves to the top. If I were to select this to 90, it would start at one side and move across. If I were to start it at 45, it'd start one corner and move across in that angle that, that I've specified. Why do you care about that? Well, you have the ability to, do, uh, to fill your mark in different ways, and depending on what you're marking on and the kind of mark you're trying to achieve, sometimes using different angles will help fill voids, especially when marking on curves and such, uh, that you can't, just can't fill when marking one direction. It also help to reduce what I call machining marks that you get as your laser is moving over your workpiece, because your laser is just another tool, and as it's moving over your workpiece in lines, it will create, sometimes you'll get small lines. So coming at it from different angles sometimes will help reduce those effects. And depending on what you're doing, it could be a firearm or something like that where you really want a nice mark on it because it's kind of an expensive item. So you want to hit it at different angles uh, in, in one, one job. In this case, you'll notice that I can set up multiple fills. I've got three available here. I also have the ability to do cross hatching in, in addition to setting my angles. And we'll talk more about that in later videos. The other thing that you need to pay attention to is the pen. I've got pen one, it defaults to pen one, but I've got all these different pens available. All these pens are really telling me is basically they're, they're giving me the opportunity to create different layers in my job and there are different laser parameters that can be applied to the particular mark that I'm trying to make. So I can have a screen here, let's say with uh, I'll have a rectangle, I'll have some text, and I can, I can go ahead, I've already filled my, my radian test outline with pen one filling at this hatch. I can go ahead and let's, let's select this rectangle. I'm gonna go ahead and, and fill it. I'm gonna also give it it's just a random hatch, but then I'm gonna choose a different pen. And when I do that, notice that it shows up as a different color. I'll do the same thing for my circle. I'll go ahead and select it. I'm going to use a different pen for that as well. Hit apply. Now, if I were to mark this right now on my work area, if I had a piece of to work to mark in there, all of these marks would use different laser parameters. Different laser parameters are repre represented over here. I've closed my screen, my hatch screen. I've opened up the screen over. I've looked now. I've, I opened up the ability to see this area on the right. And this has different laser parameters that become available to me. Each one of these can be selected separately and controlled separately. And we'll talk about that in later videos.